My name is Kate. I live with my husband Michael. We inherited a restaurant from my grandfather, which we run. This restaurant, Sunflower, was kept by my grandfather for a very long time. It was loved by the locals and had many regular customers who ate at the Sunflower. However, even though our grandfather stayed very active owner of the restaurant, he was also battling cancer. I can't be resting in a hospital room. I should be out in Sunflower working till my very last day. Even when his condition worsened, my grandfather did not show any signs of weakness and kept on working. He continued to serve delicious food with a smile and enjoy the conversation with his regular customers. And today, my grandfather passed away with his family watching over him. My grandfather named me, his granddaughter, as the heir to the restaurant Sunflower. He knew his time was coming, and he left behind a very precise will which describes the inheritance of the restaurant Sunflower. I decided to inherit and follow in my grandfather's footsteps to become the owner of Sunflower. Thankfully, even after my grandfather passed away, the customers never went away and kept on eating at Sunflower. The employees who have worked with grandfather stayed to work with us. Since I had watched and practiced my grandfather's cooking style all my life, I was confident that I could serve the same delicious food as my grandfather's. Since my grandfather worked so hard to keep his restaurant, he was well received by the regular customers who loved eating grandfather's cooking. Wow, it tastes just like the grandfather's. Even though he is gone, it tastes like as if he is still here with us. The regular customers were very happy with the fact that they were able to continue eating grandfather's cooking. I was becoming more motivated since Sunflower was thriving well even after my grandfather was gone. However, Michael, my husband, was becoming increasingly dissatisfied ever since my grandfather's death. Restaurant owners should be run by men. Why should you inherit it? Because. I am the granddaughter. Even though I own this restaurant, you will be running it with me, so it shouldn't matter. Yeah, but. Since Michael wanted to become the owner of the restaurant, he would complain about it sometimes. However, I am the top chef of the restaurant. Even when my grandfather was alive, my husband mainly did the shopping for recipes but never cooked. I've never heard a restaurant owner who can't cook. I should have not been that stubborn about it and give the ownership of the restaurant to Michael, but my grandfather precisely named me as the heir. Since I was named as the heir of the restaurant, I strongly felt that I should not disrespect my grandfather's wishes and will. Kate, can I have another one of this? Sure, coming right up! The restaurant continued to thrive and we were very busy every day. Then one day, someone came to visit. Hey, Michael, it's been a long time. It was my husband's younger brother, Dave. Dave was quite horrible. He never had a proper regular job and is just fooling around for his age, and honestly, I do not get along well with him. He had moved far away last year saying he was going to work, but then he quit that job and came back again. Oh, hey, welcome back. Even though he is horrible brother in law, he is an important brother to my husband. Michael was very happy that his brother came back. I heard that your grandfather died. Michael, did you inherit the restaurant? No, I didn't inherit the restaurant. What? Did your wife inherit it? No way! She's a woman! Woman becoming the owner is a joke! Dave was laughing, being very oblivious to the customer's annoyed stares. I couldn't be bothered to deal with my horrible brother in law and just pretended not to hear him. Since I am the family member, can it be on the house? Yeah, sure. 
My brother-in-law ate a large set meal, drank beer, and left without paying. He is that horrible. Hey, even when the other family member comes to eat at our restaurant, they always pay. It's not fair to the others, so please make my brother-in-law pay if he's going to eat at our restaurant. What? It's okay. He doesn't have any money. We should support him a little bit. My husband seems like he is on the side of Dave. After that, Dave continued to eat and drink at the restaurant regularly without paying anything at all. Every time Dave would come, I would tell Michael to make him pay, but my husband never listened. Since I was very persistent about my brother-in-law paying, my husband became annoyed by me and we stopped talking to each other. Dave started coming to the restaurant more often while my husband and I were becoming distant to each other. Every time my brother-in-law would come, my husband and him would go to the kitchen to talk in secret. I bet they are talking behind my back. I pretended not to care about them and continued to cook and serve the customers. Dave was having this conversation with my husband while glancing at me as I worked busily. Is there any way that you can own this restaurant? My wife is the owner. Since the location of this restaurant is great and there are many customers, why don't you own the restaurant and make the profit all yours? It must be hard to have your wife as your boss, isn't it? Well, yeah. Dave had his eye on Sunflower and was planning to own and run this restaurant. While Michael and I was on bad terms, my brother-in-law was trying to get my husband, who was frustrated with me, on board with his plan. But how could we make the restaurant ours? I have an idea! Michael and David began to make plans in secret. Michael has agreed to Dave's idea and decided to go through with it. Next day was restaurant's close day. My husband left early and I spent the day alone. Even though it was my day off, I remembered that the kitchen needed some cleanups. I decided to use my day off as the cleaning day, so I went to the restaurant. When I tried to open the door to the restaurant, the restaurant was already opened. I thought I forgot to lock the door last night and entered the restaurant hurriedly, finding Michael and Dave inside the restaurant. You're here! The door was open, so I was very surprised. Today is a closed day. Why are you here? When I spoke to them, they were both smirking as if they were planning something. I have something to tell you. Since you have inherited this restaurant, I don't like the way you've been acting like a stuck-up. I was not being a stuck-up. Yes, you have been. Don't you think so? Yes, you are being a stuck-up. Since the restaurant is thriving and you're making profits, you're feeling good about it. What are you saying? I was getting very annoyed and angry because they both talked to me as if I was an idiot. While I was getting furious, my husband was taking out documents on the table. I don't like your attitude. I can't take it anymore. Let's get a divorce. The document was an already filled out divorce papers. Since this was too sudden, I was astonished. What? What do you mean by this? I was upset because I did not understand what my husband was talking about. The first thing that came to my mind was the continuation of the restaurant. I have few employees, but I am sure it will be difficult for me to run the restaurant for my own after the divorce. This is too sudden for me to take it all in. It will be hard for me to continue as an owner if I get a divorce. About that, we will buy the restaurant from you. We will start the restaurant by me becoming the owner of this restaurant, so you just leave. I couldn't understand what my husband was saying. 
It's such a waste since this restaurant has a great location with so many customers with such a bland menu. So we will renew this restaurant. Yup. So just fill out the divorce paper and get out. Since they were speaking nonsense to me, my brain just froze. This is the restaurant my grandfather was the owner of for the longest time. We have enough profit from it. We should continue as it is for our customers. That means you are not going to change nor improve. Then this restaurant will go out of business in a short time. Since we don't want this restaurant to go out of business, I will run it for you is what I'm saying. No matter what I say to them, he didn't even try to hear me out. I am sure Michael was brainwashed by Dave. Okay, I will buy this restaurant by your named price. I'll make that money soon anyways, so I don't care how much. I couldn't be patient with them being so arrogant. Fine then. Then I will sell it for five hundred thousand dollars. Just give me two weeks to prepare the divorce papers and the contract paper. Don't visit the restaurant for those two weeks. Since I agreed that I would sell them the restaurant, they were just overjoyed. There was a reason why I would sell the restaurant to them so easily. They don't even know the reason about it, and was just being selfish and thinking only about their own profit. I was able to run the restaurant by myself until I gave the restaurant over to him. Hey, where's your husband? We are actually getting a divorce. Why so sudden? Then are you going to run the sunflower all on your own? No, this restaurant will be bought by my husband. I will be quitting in two weeks. The customers were surprised with a very worried face. But do not worry, I have a good news. I gave the customer the flyer which I recently made. The customer who saw the flyer instantly looked relieved. Two weeks later, I presented my husband and my brother-in-law with a contract to sell the restaurant and the filled-out divorce paper. Now you have nothing to complain about. Michael signed the contract immediately without any hesitation. Five hundred thousand dollars. I am transferring the money to your account now, so this is my restaurant now. Michael and Dave were overjoyed. While they were celebrating, I packed up my belongings and left the restaurant. On the way to submit the divorce papers. I couldn't wait to see what the two were going to do with the restaurant. Michael and Dave immediately opened the restaurant. Oh, I've already explained the situation to the employees, so there shouldn't be a problem running this restaurant without Kate. All right, let's make some money. The two were fired up and got ready to work. At ten, when the store opened, there was an unusual scene. Why isn't the customer coming? Usually, the customer comes when the restaurant opens, but no one was here. Employees who were diligent to come to work also did not show up. Michael tried to call the employees, but wasn't able to get through to them. Since this has never happened before, the two began to panic. When Michael got out of the restaurant. He found a regular customer walking by. Hey, aren't you our regular customer? Huh? Oh yeah. Um. I was worried because you didn't show up when the restaurant opened. Come in, come in. But I heard your wife quit. I was a regular customer because I wanted to eat her food, but since she's not here. There's no reason for me to come and eat here. Don't say such thing. Don't worry, we can serve you a delicious meal. Michael half forcibly pushed the customer into the restaurant. The customer reluctantly enters the restaurant and looked at the menu to order. What is this menu? Since I am the new owner, I have renewed all. 
the menu. The menu did not have any of the original menus of Sunflower. The menu had exotic words which were difficult for the customers to understand, which made the customers less excited to order. Fine, then. I will have the steak. Coming right up. Michael and Dave began cooking with great enthusiasm. Since the customer never saw my ex-husband cook, the customer was not looking forward for the ordered food. Uh, what is taking so long? Here we go! After 40 minutes of wait, the dish was finally served. The customer's eyes widened when she saw the steak which was served. What is this? What Michael served was not called cooking. Only three slices of meat was placed in the center of the plate. The outside of the meat was burnt and the inside was just raw. There was no sauce nor side dishes but only bread and soup. Since the quality of the meat is fine, the seasoning is only salt and pepper. The meat is cooked for you to enjoy the savoriness and the rareness of the meat. The customer couldn't pick up the cutlery since the steak did not look appealing. Even the soup looked very cheap. Um, I'm not going to eat this. The offended customer got up and tried to leave the restaurant. Michael was in shock when the customer didn't even try to take a bite. Hey, you're going to pay for this. It will be $30. $30? Are you joking me? I am not going to pay for this piece of shit. The customer left the restaurant furiously. Since this was not expected, my ex-husband and brother-in-law was just in shock. At the same time, they were starting to realize the mistakes they have made. Michael, who never cooked, and Dave, who never had a proper job, cannot run a restaurant. This is obvious if you think about it but the two who were only thinking about making profit failed to realize this fact. Sunflower with the two new owners never saw another customer entering their restaurant again. I, on the other hand, was starting a new restaurant in a different location. It's called Sunflower Second. The employees who worked for the original Sunflower are also with me. In fact, this restaurant was also inherited from my grandfather. My grandfather was concerned about the continuance of the sunflower as the building was getting too old. So, he made a new restaurant at a different location. My grandfather wanted to tell people about this new restaurant after it was built, but he passed away while it was in building. This new restaurant, too, was inherited by me. I never told my husband of this existence of the new restaurant. Two weeks prior to selling the sunflower, I advertised about the new restaurant to the customers. The regular customers of the original sunflower came to my restaurant because they wanted to eat my cooking. Thanks to the customers, the restaurant was very busy from the first day it opened. We were able to afford to hire new employees. I also made the $500,000 from selling original sunflower, which made it easier for me to give my employees a raise. At the new restaurant, with the original menu, I also added and served my own original menu also. In an effort to broaden my customer base, I tried to make menus which can cater younger crowd and food that even small children can eat. This became a success and more people visited my restaurant with their families. The new restaurant grew by keeping my grandfather's original menu with new menus to adjust with the younger generation. Every day, I was very busy, which gave me the feeling of fulfillment. Michael and Dave was at loss. They borrowed to pay me $500,000, so they have been receiving the debt reminders. What are we going to do about this? You are the one who started this. You should do something about this. Since Dave was not expecting this outcome, 
he didn't know what to do. Then he comes up with an idea. I have a good idea. They came to my restaurant unexpectedly at the busiest time, lunchtime, to proceed with his good idea. Help us, Kate! Dave shouted loudly without any care of many customers dining. Michael had an injury on his arm. He can't cook anymore. We will return you the restaurant, so could you just give us back the money we paid for it? The original Sunflower became your restaurant. You have signed the contract paper. Be responsible and work hard. I didn't take Dave's words seriously and tried to get back to work. Then, my ex husband entered the restaurant looking like he is in pain. Kate, help me. As he acted out, I didn't look at him and just tried to return to the kitchen when the customers were murmuring. Whoa, what is that? It looks so painful. Is he okay? Since the customers were talking about him, I looked at Michael and was shocked. He had a biggest bruise on his arm. Wait, you were really injured? Yes, that's what I was trying to tell you. Then go to the hospital right away. I hurriedly called the cab and sent my ex husband to the hospital. During my lunch break, I went to the hospital to check on Michael. Then, Michael came outside from the hospital as if he had just finished his medical examination. When I tried to ask them what was going on, they turned away from me and just ran away from me. I had a bad feeling about this, so I asked about him at the hospital reception. I think a man named Michael was seen here for examination a few minutes ago. Is it finished? Because I'm here to pick him up. Hold on a second, let me check. By using Michael's name, I tried to find out why he was injured. However, the receptionist seemed puzzled. Um, there's no history of a man named Michael visiting this hospital for a checkup. Maybe he went to a different hospital? Michael never got a checkup. Remembering that the two were running away, I knew that they were hiding something. So hurriedly, I tried to catch up to them. After driving my car for a few minutes, I was able to find Michael and Dave walking. I stopped my car and grabbed my ex husband's arm. I knew it. I looked at the hand I grabbed and I see that the bruise was gone. Michael and Dave tried to run away, but I held his hand tight. Since I looked really angry, they gave up on running away. Why is the bruise gone? You're not injured, are you? I didn't know that running a restaurant could be this difficult. There are no customers coming to the original Sunflower, so we are not making any money, which makes us not being able to pay off the debt. So, I pretended that I got injured so I cannot work anymore, which I thought I could get the money back from you. Wow, I cannot believe this. I can't believe that you were trying to deceive me with such a childish lie. I let go of his hand. Well, from now on, I want you to stay out of my life. That restaurant is yours. You do something about it. After I said that, I got in the car and returned to my restaurant. I felt disappointed when I saw them in the rearview mirror while driving away from them. The two then put sunflower on the market at the earliest. I think they decided to do that in order to pay off the debt, but since the restaurant's building is quite old, it was difficult to find a buyer. The two worked without any sleep because they kept on receiving large number of the debt reminders. They deserved this life because they were selfish and greedy and abandoned what was important to them to achieve easy money. As for me, my new restaurant is thriving more than ever before and the profit has doubled. A regular customer who has been coming to the restaurant for a long time offered to be trained by me, so now, I have an apprentice. 
for not letting my apprentice turning into the selfish, greedy person just like Michael, I would teach them running a restaurant is not an easy job. I am continuing to work very hard to make sure that my grandfather's restaurant will be around for many years to come.